Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a Lord, 
Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, just for waking up this morning, starting our way at coming up with them. We ask you, Lord, for us to stand by tonight, lead us and guide us. Help us look to the hill which is coming up help. We our help that's coming to new place, those that sat, those that shut in tonight, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that our sister McCoy tonight, Lord, give her the strength of her body right now. We ask you, Lord, that our pastor, Lord, touch and deliver, Lord, bless his family, bless his home tonight, Lord. We ask you, Lord, look down the service tonight, Lord, give her the strength with the need, Lord. Help us look to you right now, Lord, bless the, bless the service, Lord, and look down to all those that are not here. Those that are sick tonight, Lord, we ask you, Lord, touch and deliver. We thank you. We praise you. Give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Make it blessed. In this time, we give out to our Heavenly Father and to the Son Jesus Christ. Thanking God for another opportunity. Amen. Of being in the house of the Lord. Thank the Lord for blessing us. Amen. To see a brand new year. Amen. That wasn't promised. And most of all, we just grateful to God for Jesus. For without Jesus, where would we be tonight? Where would we be today? Amen. I'm very grateful. Amen. That the Lord is in my life. Amen. This is the first Bible study. Amen. Of this new year of 2024. Amen. And we shall see what the Lord will have to say to each and every one of us. Amen. We want to go to our Bibles and ask you to turn to the book of 1 Peter chapter number 5. 1 Peter chapter number 5, verse number 1. First Peter chapter 5. Hebrews, James, and then Peter. First Peter chapter number five. Yes, first Peter chapter number five, verse number one. The elders which are among you, the I elders exhort. which are among you, I exhort. I exhort. Who am also an elder. Who am also an elder. And a witness of the suffering of Christ. All right. Peter said, though he's writing to the elders. And then he also said that he was an elder. Mm -hmm. Amen. Who was a witness of the suffering of Christ. And also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Amen. So Peter is writing to the elders in the beginning of this chapter and he wanted them to know that his uh, readers to know that he was an elder also uh -huh. not only that but he was one of the twelve yes, sir. and for as much as he was one of the twelve then he was an eyewitness amen of the suffering of Christ Amen. The suffering that Jesus went through, Peter was a eyewitness. Amen. I believe even Peter himself, amen, was such an eyewitness, amen, that he ended up denying the Lord three times. Amen. Praise the Lord, because Jesus told Peter, amen, before the cock crow thrice, you will deny me three times. Amen. amen. And Peter was willing to die for the Lord, but Jesus knew Amen. That that was just the flesh talking. Praise the Lord that Peter did not have the power. Amen. That will cause him to actually want to lay down his life for the Lord Jesus Christ. But he was an eyewitness. Even one of the maids that, that kept the door said, aren't you one of his? Mm -hmm. Amen. At that time, Peter got to a point where he got upset and he started cussing. Mm -hmm. Amen. I don't know what words he used. Praise the Lord. But at that moment, the Bible said Jesus turned and looked at Peter. And then Peter remembered. Mm -hmm. Amen. The words of Jesus Christ. Amen. But you know, I'm grateful to the Lord that even though Jesus knew that Peter was only talking from the flesh, he understood where Peter was coming from. Mm -hmm. In other words, he recognized that Peter had a zeal. 
Amen. He was willing to always be the one to speak up. But Jesus knew that Peter did not have what he had at that moment. Amen. And that was the precious gift of the Holy Ghost that comes to empower and strengthen, amen, the servants of the Lord. So Peter said he was an eyewitness and also a partaker of the glory, amen, that shall be revealed. And notice now, the glory is not revealed until after the suffering. Praise the Lord. So Jesus, amen, was not glorified, amen, on First of all, he had to suffer. Yes. All right, now after his suffering, then he received that exalted position. All right, so I remember my late pastor, our late pastor would say this, amen, there is always dishonor before honor. Praise the Lord. You cannot expect to be honored without first being dishonored. Amen. In other words, you, I, I don't believe nobody go to the, um, to the oven Mm -hmm. and just repeat some magic words and then a cake or a bread amen appear in the oven mm -hmm. praise the lord you got to follow the steps yeah, praise the lord and god don't work no magic i believe god work miracles <coughs> but he doesn't work no magic so peter's writing on to the elders praise the lord and i want to say this i believe it would be very good for us to on get an understanding of who an elder is. Amen. And if there was another elder that we can reference to is the great apostle Paul. Praise the Lord. Now, I want us to see here, amen, what the apostle Paul, well, before we go there, go on to verse number two. Feed the flock of God. All right, now, feed the flock of God. Which is among you. All right, so the, the, the elder or the overseer job our responsibility is to feed the flock of who? Of God. All right. But you know, I, I always say this and I'm going to keep saying it. Amen. Because sometimes no matter how much I say it, praise the Lord, I still, you understand, some still have it wrapped up in their mind and you see certain things and you, you know, you look on, on, on different um social media if you let me put it this way amen and there are pastors that actually believe that the people belong to them <laughs> praise the lord and I, I, I mean you even got pastors that believe that the deacons belong to them mm -hmm. praise the lord and you hear them using the, the um the, the saying that these are my deacons mm -hmm. praise the lord now if, if, if there is such a pastor that is speaking like that he's speaking out of terms all right, he's not speaking according to the word of God, praise the Lord, because the deacons don't belong to the pastor. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Amen. Even the people, the pastor don't own the people. The owner of everything is the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible said the earth is who? Yes, the Lord. No, it said it's the pastor. The earth, the earth belongs to the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, and what? The fullness thereof. The world and what day and what dwell. No, if the Bible said belong to God, that's who it belongs to. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why. But you know, you're, you're grateful because the deacons and the, according to the Bible, the, the deacons and the bishops then was able to work together. Praise the Lord. But that don't mean that. And I, I don't, I don't see the Bible where none of the apostles that keep claiming that these deacons are mine. <laughs> All right, and these people are mine. They, they recognize who, you understand, who they belong to. Uh, and Peter is, Peter is speaking straight. Feed the flock. Of God. Uh, is the flock of God. He, you're saying it's God's people. And let me say this. For as much as it is God's people, God knows what his people need. Amen. Praise the Lord. You understand? That's why the leader or the pastor or overseer must stay connected to God so God can let him know what to tell the people. Praise the Lord. You understand? That's how the overseer gets his instruction. Praise the Lord. He don't go marching on his own. Praise the Lord. Now I know what it takes. Amen. You understand what it means to take marching orders. Praise the Lord. That's what my past used to tell me. Don't you make no move until I give you your what? Your marching order. Now once I got my marching orders from him, I marched. 
Praise the Lord. But I tell you what, if I ever did march before he gave me orders, I mean I felt it. Praise the Lord. You understand? Now that's true leadership. Uh, leadership is going to teach you the right way. All right, they're going to show you the right way, whether you like it or not, whether it feels good to the flesh. Let me say this. A pastor is not in the position to satisfy people's flesh. Praise the Lord. You understand? He's not in that position to do that. And I don't know how long this series is going to run for, but we're just getting started. Praise the Lord. But he's not the one, you understand, to, you understand, to appease the flesh. All right. His job is to feed. Yeah. All right. To feed the flock of who? Oh, God. The flock of God. So you understand, the church belongs to God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. It don't belong to Bishop McBean. And any time Bishop McBean ever get it in his, in his um, mind, praise the Lord, if the people belong to him, then he set himself up for a great fall. Is that right? Yeah. But I'm well aware the people don't belong to me. Praise the Lord. You understand? And I don't expect, you listen, the only thing I expect from the people of God, praise the Lord, you understand? The Bible said, don't think of no man above than which the word say. Amen. Praise the Lord. You understand? But not wrong to love your pastor, do whatever you can to be of assistance to your pastor, but don't think of him above the word. Praise the Lord. In other words, keep him right where the word of God says to keep him. Amen. Praise the Lord. You understand? Don't, don't, don't take him up higher than what God say. Praise the Lord. And don't put him lower than what God say. All right. You keep him where the word of God say to keep him. Praise the Lord. And when you do that, praise the Lord. You are in order with God. Uh, and if he tried to get you to go beyond that, then you got to be willing and strong enough to say, I love you, brother pastor. I appreciate you. Amen. But I ain't going that route with you. Praise the Lord. I'm talking according to that which is written according to what's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. So feed the flock of God. Which is among you. Which is among you. Taking the oversight. All right. The pastor must do what? Taking the oversight. Thereof. Thereof. You understand? He got to feed the flock of God, which is among you. Taking the oversight. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Now, I wanted to read verse number two. Amen. So, before we go to Acts chapter number 20. Praise the Lord. Now let's hear what Apostle Paul had to say to these elders. Amen. Praise the Lord. You understand? And, and there are different titles. You got elder, uh, bishop, praise the Lord, overseer, praise the Lord. But they're all basically, in a sense, the same. On your shepherds, praise the Lord. Acts chapter 20, verse number 17. Verse number 17. And from Miletus, from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus. He sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. All right, Paul called for the elders of the church, and the elders of the church, in this sense, is not the saints that is up in age. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. You understand? He went. He called for the elder, the overseer, the under shepherd of for the church. Praise the Lord. You understand? He called for the pastors of the church. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why only a man can be an elder. Is that right? Amen. Because the Bible said, you understand, the elder must be the husband of what? Uh, How many wives? Uh, All right. So it, it, it never said, you understand, the, um, the wife of one husband. He must be the husband of what? One wife. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. You understand? So that's the Bible. Not me. You understand? I'm teaching the Bible. Praise the Lord. And I'll continue to teach the Bible. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, read on, Deacon. And when they were come to him. When they were come to him. He said unto them. He said unto them. Ye know. You know. From the first day that I came into Asia. The first day Paul said he came into Asia. Modern day Turkey. After what manner. After what manner. I have been with you at all seasons. I have been with you all. Season. Serving the Lord with all humility. Serving the Lord with all what? All humility. Praise the Lord. You see, us pastors must serve the Lord with all humility of mind. Mm -hmm. 
Praise the Lord. You understand? Now, that's my subject, amen, for, for this series. Are you clothed with humility? Praise the Lord. You understand? Are you clothed with humility? Now, notice Peter didn't start off with the saints. All right, Peter is dealing first, praise the Lord, with the elders, with the pastors, with the leaders. Amen. Praise the Lord. You understand? There's a reason why he's beginning with the leaders, not the people. Praise the Lord. You understand? Because the biggest problem, praise the Lord, is as you, you oversee as big, our pastors, most of the problem is not so much with the people. Most of the problem, you understand, and many times, is, is in the pulpit. Praise the Lord. You understand? That's where it is sometimes. And we just got to be honest with it. That's what the truth is. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not so much in the congregation. Yeah, there's problems out there. But there's some problems up in the pulpit too. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Read on, Deacon. With all humility of mind. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind. And with many tears. And with many tears. You see a pastor, a leader. You understand? You're saying for what's right. He's going to cry many tears. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. You understand? He's going to suffer many things. Praise the Lord. You understand? I remember our late pastor forgive me. For, you no, no, no. Don't tell her. I ain't going to ask you to forgive me. You understand? You get upset, so let it be. But I'm going to reference them anyway. So, whatever. Praise the Lord. But I remember one there were times that he said he wished that he could just go back on the piano. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord, you understand? Some folks, some folks see pastors and they feel like, you know what? I would love to be in that position. Mm. You know what he used to tell us? That people like that need to get their head examined. Yes, they do. Praise the Lord, because all they see, you understand? They, they, they see certain, you understand, the glory part of it, but they don't recognize that there's great suffering with it. Yes, Lord. You understand? There are many tears, amen, that the leader have to cry. Praise the Lord. Read on, Deacon. And temptation. And temptations. He's got to go through much temptation. Face must, much temptation. Amen. Read on. Which befell me. Which befell me. By the lion and wave of the Jews. All right, Paul said, you understand? Me, even the Jews tried to kill him. Yes, Lord. That they even had to let Paul down in a basket. Praise the Lord. You understand? See, as long as Paul was on their they didn't, they didn't went out to kill him. Mm -hmm. As long as he fought against the church and you understand, stood up against the Christian, they loved Paul. Mm -hmm. They loved Saul. Mm -hmm. As long as he was one of them, he had no problem with him. Right. But soon as he met Jesus on the road to Damascus mm -hmm. and the scales came from his eyes, mm -hmm. praise the Lord, and he began to see with that spiritual eye. Yes. You understand? And he went in the synagogue, and the same Paul that tried to destroy the way, he now preached, you understand, Jesus Christ, that he is the Son of the living God. When he began to preach that message, they got mad at him. Oh, yeah. you know why they got mad at Paul? Because those Jews, mm -hmm. praise the Lord, you know what they said? After Jesus rose from the dead, and they could not find him. They said, now you soldiers should be put to death because a prisoner or someone that died vanished on your watch. Mm -hmm. So you should die. But they said, guess what we're going to do? We're going to pay you some money and we want you to be quiet. And if anybody asks you anything, tell them a lie. Mm -hmm. And the lie is that his disciples came by night and, and they stole his body away. And when you <laughs> Praise the Lord. You understand? So you lied, and we're going to back up the lie. All right, now. Now, let me say this. These were, you understand, these weren't sinners. These were religious folks. Mm. Praise the Lord. That's why relig religion is not the only, you understand, it's not the only means of salvation. Mm. Praise the Lord. You got to go beyond certain things, my friend. Praise the Lord. So Paul began to suffer persecution. Now, he's preaching that Jesus rose from the dead. Yes, Praise the Lord. And this is why they wanted to shut him down. Because now we crucified this man. We thought we got rid of this man. But the man, y'all telling us the man rose? Mm. And, 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 and listen, if they didn't believe it, they would have tried to cover 
over their tracks. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. They knew that he got up. Yeah. Praise the Lord, you understand? But now, you understand, they got to pay people to come up with a lie to act as though, you understand, that his disciples came by night and stole him away. Paul began to preach the resurrection. Mm. Praise the Lord. And the men he began to preach the resurrection. Do you know what the same body started doing? Mm -hmm. Now going after him. Praise the Lord. You understand? Know it got so bad they had to let him down into a, you know what I'm at night in a basket. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Because what? His own countrymen now done turn against him. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Oh, I feel all right. All right. Read on deep in yeah. How and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. You see, you call yourself a pastor. A pastor don't keep back nothing that is going to be profitable unto the people. Amen. Praise the Lord. You understand now? If the next generation is supposed to, you understand, uh, the next generation is dependent on this generation, mm -hmm. then it's incumbent on this generation to speak up and tell the truth so the next generation can receive the truth. Amen. Now, if, if, if this generation don't tell the truth, mm -hmm. then this generation have robbed that generation that is dependent on this generation. Amen. Praise the Lord. In other words, there can be pastors or leaders that God look at as generational robbers. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Because the next is dependent on this generation. Mm -hmm. Now, if this generation don't stand up and, 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 and tell the truth, then that generation down the road will listen. I, I, I heard a wise man say it like this. If I don't know nothing mm -hmm. and I teach my children what I know, what have my children learned? Mm -hmm. So it's upon me now, praise the Lord, you understand? As the Bible said, buy the truth and sell it now. Praise the Lord, you understand? Don't sell the truth because the truth is important. Praise the Lord. And only the truth is going to set somebody free. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to say this again, and I say it with all boldness, and I don't take it back. Praise the Lord. If you don't tell the truth, if I don't tell the truth, And I ain't going to be no generational robber. Come what may. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Man. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, I feel all right. Praise the Lord. Somebody said, keep your mind in tune with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because the Holy Ghost is going to take us right where we need to be. Man. Amen. You just bring your mind right back where the Holy Ghost wanted. And the Holy Ghost is guiding the ship. It ain't no make me the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Read on, Deacon. Get back nothing that was profitable. Get back nothing that was profitable. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Nothing. My job is not to keep back nothing uh -huh. that will be profitable unto the church. Amen. Read on. But I have showed you. But I've showed you. And have taught you. And publicly. have taught you what? Publicly. Uh, I teach publicly, is that right? Amen. That's what Paul said. I taught this truth publicly. From house to house. Jesus even told Pilate, and said, hey, go and ask them. They know what I said. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I didn't, I didn't understand what Jesus said. My ministry was not hid in the corner. He said, I spoke this thing in the synagogue. I spoke it out on the street. I spoke it by the seaside. I spoke it on the mountain. Wherever I went, I spoke what my father told me to say. And if you don't know what I said, go ask them. Because they know what I said. There, some of them was right in the crowd, and some of them partook of the five fishes, and you understand, the two fishes, and the five loaves of bread. Go ask them. Because I ain't saying nothing they're doing up in the corner. I'm saying it publicly, because Paul said what I taught, I taught publicly. From house to house. Read on. Testifying both to the Jews. Testifying both to the Jews. And also to the Greeks. And to the Greek. He didn't left nobody out. Jews and Greek. Repentance toward God. And what did he talk? Repentance towards who? God. Praise the Lord. Read on. And faith toward our Lord. And faith toward our 
Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Read on. And now behold. And now behold. I go bound in the spirit. He said, I'm going bound in the spirit. Unto Jerusalem. Unto Jerusalem. Not knowing the thing that shall befall me. There. I don't know all what's going to befall me, but look, look, well, listen to this. Saving that the Holy Ghost. All I know is what the Holy Ghost revealed to me. Witnesses in every city. I, all I know is what the Holy Ghost showed me. And if the Holy Ghost don't show me, Paul is saying, all I know is what the Holy Ghost showed me. Mm -hmm. All I know is what he told me. And if he didn't tell I have 
received of the Lord Jesus. Wait, who gave him the ministry? The Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, if the Lord didn't give you the ministry, your ministry is, praise the Lord, you understand? It ain't valid in the sight of the Lord. All in boy. Praise the Lord. The Lord called. How can they hear without a what? Come on, y'all. I know the scripture. How can they hear? Praise the Lord. 
dependent on what God gives you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Read on, Deacon. Take heed, therefore. Take heed, therefore, unto yourself. And to all the flock. And to, first of all, Paul said to what? Y'all pastors, take heed to yourself. You see what? You see what I'm doing? I'm pointing the finger to me. Paul said, I'm talking to the saints. He said, I'm talking to y'all pastors. Take heed to what? To your own self. And to all the flock. And to what? To what? All. You notice now, Paul didn't say the flock and then you. He said, me and then the flock. Read on. Over the which? Over the which? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. And made you overseas. See, when the Holy Ghost, you understand? When you are anointed by the Holy Ghost, Jesus said, take no thought what you shall say in that hour, because there's going to be the Holy Ghost. Mm. Take heed therefore unto yourself, you understand? And to the flock, over which what? No. The Holy Ghost. Made you overseas. See, the problem in the church is today, the church Praise the Lord. And they are initiated their own ways. Praise the Lord. See, when you get the Holy Ghost involved, the church will function just the way the Lord wanted to function. Amen. Praise the Lord. But too many times, believers and people put the Holy Ghost on the sideline to have their way. Praise the Lord. But when the apostles and came together and they acknowledged the Lord, the Holy Ghost got involved and then the Holy Ghost said, separate me what? Paul and Barnabas unto the ministry that I have separated them for. Mm -hmm. See, what's going on in churches today? People are calling folks to the ministry and the Holy Ghost didn't do it. Oh. Praise the Lord. Many people out in the world today they are preaching, but the Holy Ghost didn't call them. Hello. Praise the Lord. All right. Get the Holy Ghost involved. What can we do without the Holy Ghost saints? Nothing. The apostles have recognized they needed the Holy Ghost. Amen. And Jesus recognized. Listen to what Jesus said. I am your comforter right now. Mm -hmm. But I got to leave you. But he said, I ain't going to leave you comfortless. But he said, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, mm -hmm. he said, I will pray the Father that he will send you back what? A not a comforter that will abide with you forever. And when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. And when he come, he's going to glorify me.
then you still got more to give. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, if what the word did to you and you still standing for the Lord, you still got more to give. Mm -hmm. That means God ain't true with you yet. Not yet. Praise the Lord. I want when the Lord get through with me. You understand? I'm going empty to the grave. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going empty to the sky. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Church, get the Holy Ghost back involved. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Stay out of God's business. You know what the Lord told Samuel? I'm coming. Mm -hmm. You know what? This is what the Lord told Samuel. The Lord showed me this thing. I've seen it before, but he reminded me of this. You know what the Lord told Samuel? He said, Samuel, they didn't reject you. Mm -hmm. They reject me from reigning over them. Mm -hmm. When I began to study that thing, <coughs> Samuel was God's representative. Mm -hmm. God's prophet. God's spokesman. What did Israel do? Rejected Samuel because of the message. Mm -hmm. But what Israel didn't recognize, it was not Samuel's message, it was God's message. Mm -hmm. So what the Lord showed me is, praise the Lord, and you know this statement is true. Whenever somebody stands for what's right, whether you on your job, in your family, wherever, and folks reject what you say, they are not rejecting you, they're rejecting God. Amen. That's what Israel did. Israel didn't reject Samuel, they rejected God. Because mm -hmm. all Samuel did was told them what God said. That's all. And when you reject the other side, whoever it may be that tell you the truth of God's word, if my friend, you're not fighting against them, you're fighting against God. Amen. You'll be a fool to fight against my friend, and when anybody that fight against God always end up on their knees. Mm -hmm. But God is so loving and so merciful that He's even compassionate to those that do things in an ignorant way. Right. Get the Holy Ghost involved back. Let the Holy Ghost be a part of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And when the Holy Ghost is a, you said a part of it, the Holy Ghost is going to let you know, this is what I want. Praise the Lord, you understand? That's what the Lord said. This is what I want. I got a king for Israel. Why y'all in such a hurry? Mm -hmm. Why you want things your way? Give us somebody. We want somebody. The Lord he said, I've been, I've been your king all the time. Mm -hmm. I've been your protector. I've been your pastor, if you let me say. Your bishop all the time. You don't trust me to let me, you understand, to know that I know what I'm doing. Why y'all get them my way? The Lord said, all right. I'll give them somebody, but it's going to be somebody in the end. They're going to wish they didn't, they didn't get. Mm. Praise the Lord. So God gives Saul in his, in, in, in his, I believe it said, give him in his anger and took him in his wrath. Is that what the scripture said? God give them just what they need. You see, you church people, be very careful what y'all ask for. Praise the Lord. Get out of God's business. Get on your knees. Pray and let the Holy Ghost be involved in it. Amen. And when the Holy Ghost is involved in it, the Holy Ghost is going to direct your heart in the right way. The Holy Ghost is going to direct you in the, in the way of wrong. When you go that route in the way of wrong, that is not the spirit. If I go in the way of wrong, that is not the spirit of God. That is my flesh. Amen. That is your but when they got the Holy Ghost involved, the Holy Ghost began to do great wonder. And the Holy Ghost had to sign off on whoever the church sent out. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You understand? The church can't send out anybody to do something and the Holy Ghost didn't sign off. Mm. Praise the Lord. Or this is what we'll do. I always explain to somebody. You understand? We'll vote, you understand, to, to send this group out to send the Holy Ghost. Mm. You get on your knees and pray. The Holy Ghost will direct your heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. You don't get in your flesh, Lord. Listen. Mm. 
You don't get in your flesh. I don't get in my flesh. Mm. A pastor's job is not to serve his desires. Mm. Praise the Lord. Not to serve his desires. Mm -hmm. But to feed the flock of God over with the Holy Ghost of what? Made them overseer. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost got to make you the overseer. The Holy Ghost got to sign off on your position. If the Holy Ghost is signed off and you got your paper off on the internet, you are illegal. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And if the people, you understand, sign you in, you're still illegal until the Holy Ghost sign you in. Mm -hmm. But if the Holy Ghost is not involved, all that was done is what the people wanted and not what God wanted. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Read the good. To feed the church of God. Feed the church of God. Which he had purchased. Which he had purchased. Own blood. Which is what? With his own blood. The pastor's job is to equip the people of God and get them ready to you understand. Go and write that. But before I go there, no, get me Ephesians 4 and 12, Deacon. All right. Dealing with the elders. Ephesians 4. What does it say? When he ascended up and I, he led captivity captive. And he that, for, uh, verse number 10, mm -hmm. he that descended the same also that ascended up far above all heaven, mm -hmm. he might fulfill all things. Yes. He gave some apostles. Some apostles. Some prophets. Some prophets. Some evangelists. You understand? Some evangelists. Some pastors. Some pastors. And teachers. And teachers. For the perfecting of the saints. Praise the Lord. Listen. You see, these gifts that was given to those men is not for them to look good. It's not for their own selfish ambition. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, humility should be the hallmark of all believers. Praise the Lord. Humility should be the hallmark of the church. Amen. Where there is no humility, where humility is absent, pride is present. And if pride is absent, then humility is present. You can't have both operating at the same time. Sure. I can't be prideful, you understand, and humble at the same time. It's got to be one. Do you know humility is a decision? It's not some emotional feelings. Humility is a decision that I decide on my own. Praise the Lord. That I will walk humble before the Lord. The Bible never said God's going to humble us. The Bible said, well, we're going to get to that later. later. But humble yourself. Every believer, every pastor, every leader, it's not God's job, but it's our job to do what? Perfecting of the same mm -hmm. for the works of the ministry. For the work of the ministry. For edifying of the body of Christ. For the, you, see what the, you see what these positions is for? It's not for self-gratification. It's not to serve our own desire. But it's for the building up of the church. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Yes. Praise the Lord. You understand? Building the church up. The gifts that are given to the people in the church is not for them to look good. You able to sing well under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost is not to make you look good. Praise the Lord. It's to glorify the Lord. Praise the Lord, you understand? And edify the body of Christ. Lord bless you to teach another a wonderful Bible study. It wasn't to make you look good. It's to edify the church and glorify Jesus. Not the one taught the Bible study or the one preached the message or the one led the testimony service. Again, worship is not, you understand, so much you're surrounded. Worship is a matter of the heart. <clears throat> the attention should not be drawn to the person leading the testimony service. It should be more drawn to who? The Lord. That's why some of 
these churches so wrapped up in all of these worship groups and all that, they are focusing on them folks instead of focusing on the one that they don't see. Praise the Lord. Give glory to God, not to the leaders. And this is why the Lord gave me a, a, a Bible study a little while ago. Stop focusing on the messenger and focus on the message. Too many folks want to get wrapped up and tied up. Well, that's my minister. You understand? I want to hear him preach. I want to hear you. Oh, all that nonsense. Praise the Lord. Focus on the message. There is no messenger without the message. I am a Paul. I am a Cephas. Paul got his own followers. Peter got his own followers. But what does the Bible say? One plan, one water. But who's giving the increase? Did Peter give any increase? Sure. Did Paul give any increase? Sure. Well, you're a pastor out there. You're trying to build your church up. You are going about it the wrong way. Let the Lord give the increase. And if God only wants five in the building, praise the Lord. That's the five God will get. And he ain't going to be satisfied until he gets five. Mm -hmm. And if he want 500, that's what he want in that building. And he ain't going to be satisfied with 499. He will not be satisfied until every chair is filled. You understand? Until the banquet is full. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if folks reject it, the Lord will send in what? You understand? The whoremonger, the prostitute, the drug addict. He'll save them, fill them with the Holy Ghost, and sit them down in the seat that you should have had. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what Jesus said. The publicans and sinners in Harlem, they heard what John said and they repented. But y'all religious folks, y'all heard what he said. But y'all reject him. Praise the Lord. Y'all reject him. But these uh, outcast folks, they heard him. They humble themselves to him. What's wrong with y'all religious people? Why don't you humble yourself? What God had, you understand, is what's supposed to be for the Jews. God said, forget y'all. I'll get back to y'all later. But I'm going to call the people that were not known of me. Praise the Lord. I was sought after them that know not me. God will get his number. Praise the Lord. No matter what you say, no matter what I say, God will get his number. Read on, deacon. Till we all come. Till we all come. In the unity of the faith. In the unity of the faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. Right, the knowledge of the Son of God. Stop right there because I want to get to something. Get me Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Actually, before you get Ezekiel, get me Isaiah 56. Isaiah. Verse 10 and 12. 56. Isaiah 56. Verse 10 through 12, Isaiah 56. His watchmen, his watchmen are blind. <laughs> you know what God said? God looked at his watchmen and he said, y'all are blind. Mm. Lord, please don't say that about me. Because mm. the same way he said it about them, he can say it about me. Mm. Praise the Lord. I ain't exempt. Read on. They are all ignorant. They're all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They're all dumb dogs. They're ignorant and dumb dogs. Now, who is God talking to? Watchmen. Read on. They cannot bark. They can't bark. Sleeping. Sleep. Lying down. Lying down. Loving to slumber. Loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs. They're greedy dogs. Which can never have enough. Never have enough. They are shepherds that cannot understand. They are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. See? All oh, God said, all oh, y'all look into your own way. But God said, what about my ways? God said, an ox know his owner. You understand? But he said, my people don't know me. But the ox know who his owner is. God said, if the ox know his owner, how come my people don't know me? Read on. They all look to their own way. These pastors and leaders, they were looking to their own ways. Everyone for his gain. For, you understand? See, that's the problem with many preachers today. They are in the business of preaching to get rich. Mm -hmm. They're not in the business of saving souls. 
Being a pastor, being a preacher is not a, you a position to get rich. It's a position to be concerned about the souls of those that Satan got bound up. Not for you to get, you understand, to, to, to gain riches. That's why the world is filled with all these charismatic preachers today. Mm -hmm. Their mission is to get rich. They worry about no souls. Greedy. Mm -hmm. They're never satisfied. Is that verse 12? No, sir. Read on. Everyone for his gain. Everyone for his gain. From his quarter. You understand? From his quarter. Come ye. Come ye. Say they. Say they. I will fetch wine. I will fetch wine. And we'll fill ourselves with strong drink. You see what you see what happened to the leaders? They start drinking intoxicated wine. God said, I see, you understand. Y'all supposed to be showing your people the way. And y'all are drunk and caught up in the world. And tomorrow shall be as this day. It's gonna be as today and much more abundant. And we're gonna even do more tomorrow than we did today. That's it. Praise the Lord. That's how bad the you understand God leaders that He set up, you understand, to show the people the right way. They got so corrupt. Mm -hmm. Would not tell the people what's right, would not show them the right way. All they saw was their own selfish gain. What they can get out of it. Mm -hmm. As long as I get $10,000, that's all that matters to me. I'm good. Who cares about who goes to hell or not? Mm -hmm. God cares. <coughs> and you and I are going to have to answer to God if, you're if we don't tell them that which is right. Amen. Praise the Lord. You understand? We're going to have to stand before the Lord. Mm -hmm. But I Praise the Lord. Get me Malachi 2 and 7. Malachi. Malachi 2 and 7. Then really, Malachi 2 and 7. Travel with me real quick. For the priest's lips. For the priest's lips. Should keep knowledge. Should keep what? Knowledge. The pastor's lips, the leader's lips, all to have the pastors got to get some knowledge about the word. And they should seek the law. And they should seek the law at his mouth. Oh Lord. So it's very, you, you know what God is saying? Mm. The law was not the man's law or the priest's law. They heard it from me. Mm. So when the people come to you, don't tell them what you want to tell them. Tell them what I said. The law that you got, the message you got, you got it from me. So when they come to you to ask you an understanding of the law of God, don't tell them what you think. Mm. Tell them what I say. Because you didn't hear it until I told you. Mm -hmm. So if you're a pastor and the folks come to you, you got to be honest and tell them what's right. Amen. Because if you don't tell them what's right, you're robbing them. You are a robber. Mm -hmm. You're robbing from the next generation just to please yourself. They got to seek the knowledge at our mouth. But if we don't got it, and if we have it, but don't tell it, we're going to be getting accountable for it. Man, he is the messenger of the Lord. He's the what? Messenger of the Lord. See whose messenger he is? Mm -hmm. That's why he's dangerous. Because he's a messenger of the Lord. And he is in a, in a place where if he's not careful, the Lord could even kill him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Will the Lord, can the Lord kill somebody he said? Yes. yes he can. If they don't do his will, he can. If that's what he chooses to do, it's up to him. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Get me Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 3. And then we're going to jump over to 11. Leviticus chapter 10. Ten verse 
verse number? Number three, Leviticus 10 and 3. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Then Moses said unto Aaron, mm -hmm. This is it. This is it. That the Lord spake, saying, mm -hmm. I will be sanctified in them. Notice what God said. I will be sanctified, and the them that he's talking about is in the priests. God said, I'm going to be sanctified in them that come nigh me. So, listen, those that have close access to God, God said, I'm going to be sanctified through them. The priests have close access to God. Not anybody can get close to God at that time. But today, everybody in the body of Christ can get close to God that I'm accepting Jesus and be born again and filled with the Holy Ghost. You are now a priest. Mm -hmm. And you have close access to what? To the throne of God all because of what Jesus did on Calvary. Now everybody in the church, we are what? Living epistle. You understand? No one read of all men. Chosen generation. Royal priesthood. A mm -hmm. royal. Mm -hmm. Read on. That come nigh me. That come nigh me. And before all the people. And before what all the people. Let me say this. You know what God did? God had to kill Aaron's two sons. Not because God has blessed you, your ministry is thriving. Your head or my head can get so big, you know what I said? I don't need God no more. Mm -hmm. I can branch off and I can do what I want to do, no matter what God said. Because God told him, don't do it until I tell you to do it. Mm -hmm. See, when we preachers want to do it the way we want to do it, we got the answer to God. So what did God get to Aaron to son? Kill them because they want to offer fire to God when God didn't say to do it. Mm -hmm. See how serious this thing is for us pastors? If we don't do it according to God's will, God can kill us if he want to. Yeah, we're not under the law back then, but there are many things that are still applied to us today. Amen. But it's up to God what God does. Praise the Lord. Verse number 8, Deacon. Verse number 8. Yes, sir. And the Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, The Lord spake unto Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine, nor strong drink. See what the Lord told them? Don't drink no wine, y'all preachers. Don't drink no intoxicated wine. Praise the Lord. Read on, David. Thou, thou, nor thy son, nor your son, with you. When ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation. God said, when you go into the tabernacle of the congregation, don't come in here drunk. Lest ye die. And God said, if you come in here drunk, I'm going to kill you. Praise the Lord. Is that what God said? Yes, sir. God said, when you come before these people, when you stand before them, you are a representative of me. Now, how are you coming in there drunk? You're coming into the service of the Lord. God said, I don't want no drunk pastor, no drunk minister. Because you're coming as a representative of me. Got to be sober. Sober-minded. Not filled. I can't come here and say, fill of me. Mm. I want to be filled with the Spirit. That when I sit and I stand, I want to give you what thus said the Lord. Amen. Don't come before God drunk. God said, I'll kill them. Right in the temple. In the congregation, among the people. He said, I'll do it. Thank God for Jesus today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because if it wasn't with Jesus, my goodness, I know I'll be dead. Mm. Praise the Lord. Read on, Deacon. It shall be a statue forever. Shall be a statue for what? Forever. Throughout your generation. <laughs> Throughout your generation. And that he may put difference between holy and unholy. It's up to the leaders now to, you understand, to set, you understand, this is how it's supposed to be. Mm. But it starts with us. That the people would know what's holy from what's not holy. And between unclean and clean. How the people going to know what's holy and clean from what's not holy or what's clean from unclean if the leaders don't tell the people what thus said the Lord? If the leaders don't tell the people what thus said the Lord, 
they, they allow sin to increase. Sin will continue to persist. If truth is not called, sin will continue to persist among God's people. Read on, Deacon. That you may teach the children of Israel. You got to teach the children of Israel. All the statutes which the Lord has spoken unto them mm -hmm. by the hand of Moses. By the hand of Moses. Teach your children. Uh, teach them. Don't rob your, your next generation. Because Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 says, My people mm -hmm. are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Let me explain what Hosea is saying. And this applies to many churches today. It's not that Israel did not know God's word. It's not that they were not taught God's word. They were the ones that heard directly from God. No other nation on this earth. You know what? why they lack? Praise the Lord. You know why they were destroyed? Because of the lack of knowledge? Because Israel many times intentionally and willfully reject God's word. Praise the Lord. In other words, they know what was right, but they still fought against it. They still rejected even though they know it was right. And God said now, because you reject us and say, and you don't take my word, I'm going to reject you and your what? And your children. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. So it's not, listen, they knew what was right. And the reason why many folks are being destroyed, God said, you priests, y'all have the knowledge, y'all know it. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Lord said, no, teach them my word. Let them know my law. Let it proceed from your lips. Remind them. Praise the Lord. You understand? Turn their hearts back to the way of holiness. Turn their hearts back to the way of that which is right. We should have earnestly taken heed to the things we have heard. That's what Paul said. Let's at any time we would, we let them sleep. Y'all know what we were taught? Praise the Lord. How many still standing for what they was taught? Amen. Praise the Lord. Read on, Deacon. And Moses speak unto Aaron. That's all right. I want to close. So get me Leviticus. Ah, not Leviticus. Get me Ezekiel 22. We're going to close out here. Verse 25. There is a conspiracy. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. You listen, you hear what the Lord said? There's a conspiracy. You know what conspiracy is? A group of people that got together and they're on the same mindset. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. They don't plan. They don't cock it out. Mm -hmm. They don't got it all situated what they're going to do. They already done conspired. Praise the Lord. Now, the people that conspired was the false prophets. And all of them decided they're going to come together and they're going to conspire against the true prophets. Mm -hmm. Read, read on, Deacon. There is a conspiracy of her prophets in the midst thereof. In the midst thereof. Like a roaring lion raving the prey. Mm -hmm. They have devoured souls. They have devoured what? Souls. Let me say this. If, if you're a pastor and God said to cry judgment, don't cry peace. Praise the Lord. If God said cry out judgment, don't say peace. And if God said cry out peace, don't say judgment. In other words, if God said cry out judgment, cry judgment. If God said cry out peace, speak for peace. Mm -hmm. God knows what he's saying. God knows where danger is. Mm -hmm. So cry out whatever God tells you to cry out. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. You tell what the Lord tells you to say. Amen. Read on. 
and have taken the treasure and precious things. This is what many preachers have done today. Don't you see them on YouTube? Mm -hmm. It's all about money. It's all about building their pocket. They don't destroy souls. These false prophets was fighting against the true prophets that was willing to stand up for what's right. So the false prophet then came together and conspired together. <clears throat> now let's get these true prophets out of the way because they're messing up our business. Praise the Lord. But God said, I see what's going on. I know the conspiracy. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. You say, don't get with nobody and conspire against that which is right. Praise the Lord. Amen. No matter who they are, don't you get with folks and conspire against nobody in the church. I ain't just talking about the pastor. I'm talking about anybody in the body of Christ. Don't get with folks and conspire against your brother or your sister. And for God's sake, don't get with nobody and conspire against you understand, your own pastor that is standing for what's right. Praise the Lord. Conspire. Your job is to be your brother and sister keeper and to build them up. You should be able to protect your brother and sister. Don't get with the wrong folks. Because if you love your brother and sister, you ain't get with them folks that is conspiring to destroy you. Eh? That's not the love of God. Amen. And you say you love your pastor, you ain't going to get with folks that conspire against him for what's right. You don't love him the same the way you say you love him. No, you don't. And you don't love your brother and sister if I don't do what I can with the help of the Lord to protect the saints of God, to build them up. Praise the Lord. I have failed. Praise the Lord. A pastor don't get with folks, you understand, and degrade people in the body of Christ. That's not leadership. Sure. Praise the Lord. You don't get with wrong folks and conspire And if you people out there in the congregation, you love the Lord and you love truth, you will not get with nobody and conspire against the man of God, whoever it is, your Sunday school superintendent. If they're standing for what's right, you will not get with them and conspire against that which is right. That is not no love. Praise the Lord. My love for you would never be the way to destroy you. My love for you would be to protect you and to help you along the way. That's what love is. <laughs> Read on, Deacon. They have made her many widows. Made her many widows. You see what done happened in Jerusalem? Many husbands die. Uh, no, women are widows. How many people got to die because people don't want to tell the truth? How many got to go to hell? How many? Read on. Her priests have violated my law. The priests violated the law. And have profaned my holy things. And corrupt my holy things. This is for the, they, they, they for the saints. This is for us. The Lord dealing with first. Read. They have put no difference between the holy and profane. They put no difference between the holy and the what? Profane. And the profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean. They show no difference. My job, you understand, to the help of God is to show the difference. I, if I, I'm saying I'm close to God, I got to preach holiness. Because the more closer you get to God, the more you recognize how holy God is. And how holy God is, you don't feel worthy to be in the presence of God. Just know how holy God is. That's what Isaiah said. Woe is me! For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among our unclean people. Woe is me! Don't get lifted up and pride us, because we got some position. You understand? We got to recognize, we got to stay so humble before the Lord. The higher we go in the Lord, the more humble we ought to be. Woe is me! I ain't worthy. Praise the Lord. I don't deserve it, Lord. Woe is me. Read on. And have hid their eyes from my Sabbath. They hid their eyes from God's Sabbath. And 
I am profane among them. And I'm profane among them. Her princes. Her princes. In the midst thereof. In the midst thereof. Are like wolves. Are like wolves. Raven in the prey. You understand? Raven in the prey. To shed blood. To shed blood. And to destroy souls. And to destroy souls. To get dishonor gain. Dishonest gain. I'm sorry. You see? All they are looking forward to is gain. To serve their own desires. To serve their own pleasures. Read on. And her prophets. And her prophets. Have dug them with untampered mortar. You know what? You know what the prophets did? Untempered mortar. And that's what people is doing today. They're whitewashing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. They're whitewashing. They're not repairing. Praise the Lord. You understand? They're only I'm trying, to, I'm trying to remember the word that I had. Whitewashing. It'll come back to me. Go on, read on, Deacon. Seeing vanity mm -hmm. and divining lies unto them. Divining lies unto them. Saying, Thus saith the Lord God. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Whitewashing and patching things up. Now uh, that's what they do, whitewashing and patching things up. Mm -hmm. It'll never be right until you understand you rebuild it. Mm -hmm. Not whitewashing and patching it. Mm -hmm. You don't patch the word. You tell the word like it is. Read on. I want to get to something and close up. Saying, Thus saith the Lord God. Saying, Thus saith the Lord God. And the Lord have not spoken. Praise the Lord. Just said it. Just said, standing before the people said the Lord said it, and God said, No, I didn't. Mm -hmm. You're lying. Praise the Lord. Uh, have you ever seen them where they want to twist scriptures? Mm. <laughs> uh, twisting scripture for your selfish gain. Oh, yeah. No, the scripture don't mean that. No, the scripture didn't say, but they're going to twist it anyway. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. All you twisting scriptures, leaders, stick with the scriptures. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Don't twist it. God didn't call you to twist the scripture. He called you to, you understand? Thus it be who Christ is suffering to rise the third day from the dead. Then they open up their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Don't twist it. Tell it like it is. Praise the Lord. If you live right, you're going to heaven. You live right. When you stand up there to preach my eulogy, tell my family I went straight to hell. Mm. <laughs> That's what he told his family. Mm. He told the preacher, when you stand up there to preach, please tell my family the life I live, mm. I went straight to hell. No. Now I say use a little wisdom. Mm. Yeah, you, you can tell him, but just be sensitive in what you say. But when it's all said and done, the man was right, you know what he said? Mm. I am not qualified for heaven. So don't get up on that pulpit and put me in heaven mm. when I live like the devil. All right. Now that's the type of people I love. Hey man, brother, you realize that you recognize that you're a sinner and you didn't live right and you know where you're going. Mm -hmm. Too many leaders want to put folks in a right relationship with God. Wherever the tree falls, that's where it lies. All right, now. If I die in sin, that's where I'm going to rise. How I'm going to rise. Mm -hmm. If I die right, that's how I'm going to rise. Yeah. Read on, Deacon. People of the land mm -hmm. have used oppression. They have used oppression. And exercise robbery. They exercise robbery. And have vexed the poor. Mm -hmm. And the need. And the need. Go they, on. They mm -hmm. have oppressed a stranger wrongfully. They even oppress strangers wrongfully. And I sought for a man. This is what I want to close up with. The Lord said, now, in the midst of this thing, this collapsing that's going on, moral degeneration or degradation. God said, when I look around, he said, I see the building collapsing. Mm -hmm. You understand? I see things that should have been standing is now, you understand, going down. Mm -hmm. 
And God said, when I look among Judah, I begin to search among them to see, can I find me a man? That should make up the hand. Who's going to make up the head? God said, I want to find a man in the midst of all of this wrong. Can I find one man? Can I find somebody? Stand in the gap. Who wants to stand in the gap? God wants you, my friend, to stand in the gap. God said, I see what they're doing. But he said, I still want a man to stand in the gap. To lead the people back to repentance. To lead them to that place where they can see God with all of their heart, with an earnest heart. Seeking God and asking God to send a revival. God said, I want somebody I can depend on. Can God depend on you? Only you can answer that question. Can God depend on me? Only I can answer it. But God said, I want somebody who's going to stand in the gap. Who gonna do it? God said, don't you see the building collapsing? Somebody got to remind them. Somebody got to lead them back to repentance. Who is gonna do it? Who will stand? Or are you gonna be a part? Oh, the building collapsing, I don't care. God said, I want to find me a man. God said, I begin to search for a man who's going to be a repairer of the breach. Read on. But listen to what God said. And I should not destroy. God said, if I find a man, I ain't going to bring judgment on this city. I ain't going to do it on these people. But get, get, look what happened. But I found nothing. Praise the Lord. I closed my Bible. God said, I found what? Nothing. Let me ask you a question tonight. Can God depend on you? And you don't have to be a pastor for God to depend on you. You can be anybody in the body of Christ. God still depending on you. Can God depend on you? Or are you going to whitewash things and patch it up? Are you going to be the one to stand in the gap? Jesus said, will you all so go? Mm. Peter said, Lord, to whom we going to go? No. You're the only one that have the words of eternal life. Somebody got to stand for what's right. Yeah. Who will be a witness for the Lord? I want to be a witness for him. And I want to serve him with all humility. Yeah, I get a little, I get a little loud when I get excited. But when I done, praise the Lord. My aim is to serve the Lord with humility. And God knows my heart. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Huh? Amen. So this is just the beginning. We're gonna continue. But the Lord said, first of all, huh? He said, I got to deal with this first. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You understand? Problem. You understand? Starts with the head. And when you finish with the head, then the Lord can speak to the people. So tonight he didn't talk much to the people. He spoke much to us. Me included. But I promise him, praise the Lord. You understand? That I want God to know he can depend on me. And God can depend on you. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. May God give you peace. Is our prayer. In Jesus' name.